David Szymanski's about to make you his bitch. Ah, Chop Goblins. Finally a game for us Chopophiles. Goblin Sexuals. Those of us that just love hurting these gross little freaks. Chop Goblins is a 45 minute micro shooter coming from David Szymanski, the cool creator behind, most popularly, Iron Lung and Dusk. Following the release of Dusk, Szymanski has quickly rocketed into the canon of retro-vibed auteurs, and that's not even taking his earlier experimental horror work into account. Szymanski's repertoire is rife with interesting and wildly engaging takes on some tried genres, but are any of those games as earth-shatteringly groundbreaking as Chop Goblins? I don't think so. But Chop Goblins doesn't just skate on its novelty, it's got some real gripping narrative. Basically, you're a cut-rate burglar doing some gentle B&E in the basement of your local museum when, uh-oh, you accidentally stumble onto the literal Pandora's box of goblin-based extinction level events, unleashing this freaky, slimy scourge on the earth. As the hapless liberator of these creatures from their prison, of course they greet you with reverence and cleavers. Like, like a lot of fucking cleavers. <laughs> Thankfully, Szymanski makes sure that your arsenal is up to the task of mowing down these little perverts. You start with a lowly dagger, a melee weapon bound to the right mouse button, which is your best option for smashing breakables. I love breaking stuff. Combat-wise, I never really used it once I picked up my first bits of real firepower, but it does have a pretty handy parry where a correctly timed knife attack will actually send the goblin's throwing dagger right back at them. Though I spent most of my time forgetting that this was a thing, so it's not super integral to the game's design. Your weapon bound to one is a flintlock pistol, which effectively serves as a slow-firing precision weapon in this game. It's got some pretty righteous sound feedback with each shot, which helps assuage the pain of its agonizingly slow fire rate. In theory, you'd return to this gun later in the game when you needed to hit something super far away, super hard, but I never really used it unless my ammo for later weapons ran dry. Typically, I think that giving you such a plotting weapon as your first gun is kind of a weird design decision, but you can get your third weapon in a secret room even earlier than your intro to the flintlock, so it's not that bad. Number three is the Impaler. A rapid fire juggernaut capable of dishing out sustained damage at just about any range. The Impaler is sort of the forbidden love child of Painkiller's bolt gun and Quake's nail gun with its unconventional machine gun munitions. Typically this bad boy isn't unlocked until level three, to fight Dracula, obviously. We'll get there, but it's not a retro shooter without early access to your arsenal. Rewinding a bit to number two is the Street Sweeper, whose big drum mag is begging you to lobotomize those grubby miscreants. <laughs> this isn't your typical shotgun, but that's not to say it isn't meat-lovingly good. It surprisingly lacks some oomph up close. I don't know, my brain expects my mouse clicks to be rewarded with jibs and red mist when I've got a scatter gun, but the Street Sweeper more than makes up for it with its rapid fire. More akin to an auto shotgun than your garden variety pump action hole maker. Almost more than the Impaler, you're going to want to keep that left mouse button held with the Street Sweeper. Finally, we wrap up our weapons with the Wand of the Corinthians, which is kind of serving as Chop Goblin's rocket launcher slash railgun slash BFG. Which is to say, it jibs. It's the Goblin Jibber. The Jibbler. This thing is awesome. In the last two levels, Chop Goblins really load you down with ammo for the Jibbler, so you've got plenty of time to relish in its on-demand money shot. It doesn't insta-kill some of the tougher goblins, but its area of effect makes sure that all of their compatriots are absolutely evaporated. The level design is varied enough for its runtime. You start your journey trotting through the back rooms and storage spaces of the museum before spending an unfortunately short time in the museum itself. I'd love to have seen this space expanded on for more than the few halls you fight in, but Szymanski's made it pretty clear that this game was made in his spare time between other projects, so I can't really fault it too much. After the museum, you make your way through a fairly standard urban city environment with some nice verticality interspersed throughout. Though, so this is the level where I found myself really wishing for an auto map of some sort. It may just be a 
skill issue, but I found myself looping back in on myself time and time again in the side area just before the level's conclusion. Though this is really the only section I got lost in, so I wouldn't expect too much trouble from this game. After the city level, we're transported back in time to Dracula's Castle, which brings some much loved pizzazz to the level selection. The castle is dark and moody with some excellently schlocky Halloween style music to accompany it. Seriously, I was like half expecting the purple people eater to jump out at some point. This level is one of the best arenas in the game too. It's got this cramped alley with a walkway overhead that's asking you to aim up and down taking care of both levels and it comes in two stages. Once when you enter the room and need to gun down everyone in there and make your way up. And again when you pull the lever atop the walkway and get to rain hell down on the new arrivals. I really love the atmosphere of this level, but it's unfortunately the shortest in the game, at least for me. I finished it in just six minutes, even with that Dracula fight I mentioned earlier, and I kind of would have just wanted more. Right, I, I forgot to mention, he uh, he serenades you for the duration of the fight. It must have slipped my mind, it's just basic boss stuff. Once you've taken care of the Caped Crusader, you're teleported further back to ancient Greece, where you're tasked with intercepting an ancient weapon that the gobblers have their sight on, the aforementioned Wand of the Corinthians. Visually, this level takes the cake for me, as its bright blue skies and warm stone walls are a huge departure from the grime and darkness presented thus far. Unfortunately, there's... Not a lot here that I found super remarkable otherwise though, uh, including a kind of weird puzzle gating you from the BFG one that felt like it came out of left field. The puzzle itself isn't weird, it just feels out of place. Finally, after demonstrating the power of the wand, you're taken to the final level, an alt timeline future where the goblins won, and they've got laser swords. As goofy as this is, I really didn't love this level. The scenery is pretty samey and pretty dark, which meant that the future leather dom daddy goblins just kind of melt into their backgrounds. They've got these bright laser cleavers they're throwing at you, but because it's hard to make out exactly where they are in their wind-up animation, I often find myself confused as to whether a particular laser blade was still in the goblin's hand or if it was actively hurtling towards me. Overall, the encounter design within these levels is workmanlike with an ever-present standard of competence, but None of the arenas really wowed me as an encounter. There's still fun areas to stomp around, but I feel like I had seen most of what these combat rooms had to offer in other games. But to be honest, that kind of gets to the heart of what I like about Java Goblins, though. It's just really cozy. And right on 40 minutes from my first playthrough, it feels like something I can dip into again after a while and get another taste of that nostalgia hit. Chop Goblins is extremely unpretentious, as erudite the subject of Goblin Gobbling might seem. From the charming youthful visuals and concept to its bouncy soundtrack, Chop Goblins really just wants you to have a good time. And you do. That $5 price tag does an effective job of deflecting most of the critiques I've leveled at it. Chop Goblins never puts on airs of being anything more than a short silly bit of fun. A distraction with some substance. I really enjoyed my time with Chop Goblins, and if you like the sound of goblins yelling, where's all the cheese, before being eviscerated by an auto shoddy, well, I think you'll probably like it too. Chop Goblins is available on Steam for $4.99. Check it out.